your short track racing connection. <laughs> from the Fireside Beverage Studios. This is the Turn 4 Podcast. Look for us every Tuesday where all major podcasts are found. Like us on Facebook at Turn 4 Podcast. And now, DJ and Zach, take it away. Green, green, green. All right. Uncle Jer, we finally got you on the podcast. A little, yes. little apprehensive. Yes. <laughs> so I'm, not, I'm, not a, I'm not a media kind of guy. Media. <laughs> I'm surprised you called him Uncle Jer. I don't want him to call me my nickname that he has oh, for okay, me, so right. it's Uncle Jer today. That's fair. That's fair. You can call me the console. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. So, what year did you actually start behind the wheel of a race car? I know you've literally grown up at this racetrack, but what year, how old and what year was it that you started racing? Oh, God. You're, you're, I would say 90. Eight or 99, I can't remember exactly which year it was. I would say 98. 98, yeah. Did you start in a street stock? Street stock. I think they were called the Super Streets back then. Or street stocks. I can't remember exactly. It was a Camaro. He forgot his Geritol this morning, so he's forgetting all of his stuff. <laughs> Come on. <man. laughs> I've been here five minutes. Five minutes, and we're already firing it off. Yeah, that's rude. What number were you when you first started? I was the zero one because uh, my brother, Jim... Had been racing with my other uncle for, I don't know, three, four years before that. And uh, he was the 10. And I always wanted to be like my older brother. Always had to be. So you just flip-flop it. Yeah. And my well, my uncle my uncle that built the car that I ran first, he had another car that was the 10 yep. in that division. And my brother was in the late models, which was the division above yep. Street Stocks. So, yeah, it was a zero one. Zero one hero. <laughs> Zero one hero. Camaro. Yep, it was a Camaro. Um, it was actually the car that my brother started with that my uncle Todd had built for him, and then they had moved to the late models, and that that car got stuffed in the bushes. And then, <laughs> uh, my uncle Eric wanted um, we were going to build a mini stock, and then once we got to sitting down and figuring out what it was going to cost to build a mini stock and. All that he had all the parts to build a street stock, so we ended up building the street stock rather than the mini stock. And Sounds like a conversation that was recently had at the at the Zulo race shop. Yes, <laughs> it was. I, I, can we we can we can touch on yeah because it's that, it's right? public knowledge that he's registered at this point. So yeah, we, we um, my brother and I had the same conversation with my nephew. Um, my brother was going to build him a mini stock to go same as his pure stock a nissan and he uh we, we had this conversation and yeah. it was cheaper to build a late model we were going to build him a super street but um the amount of cars in the super street division as competitive as that is we wanted him to get his feet wet in a division that had less cars um, more experienced drivers because i mean you get some animals in the, in the super streets, me being one of them. <laughs> <laughs> At True. least he's honest, though. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I thought they were filming me full of shit when I stopped over there. Well, Dylan's like, you should look at the Port City clip we got out there. I was like, okay. I'm like, there's no way. It, that, that, was, that was about when the conversation started. Yeah. My brother had thrown it out on the table. I think that afternoon after you left. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, he's like, yeah, I'm thinking about going late model racing. I go, huh? What are you talking about? Because this whole time is we're going up to mini stocks. And the whole time I'm thinking like, man, I don't know much. But Hayden Granier was on here. And when he was talking about how much money he had tied up into his mini stock, I was like, it has to be the same, if not a little bit cheaper to race in a different division, but still move up. So when he threw out the late models, I was like, ah, I mean, I don't know, if, you know, what total it would be, but it's got to be kind of close maybe a little bit more expensive i'd assume right uh, it, to, if you're going with all brand new the late models would be a lot more expensive you're right but where my brother and i for 25 years have raised street stocks late models we've acquired enough parts pieces we uh, <laughs> the car that we put together we dragged it out of the woods uh, right before christmas i think it was. yeah about a month ago now probably yeah about a month ago and uh, dragged it out of the bushes, carried it down the road on my skid steer forks, <laughs> brought it in his shop. And he 
Dylan sandblasted it. Jimmy and I spent the last couple weekends welding new bars in it, making it the way that we want because that's what we do. I mean, yep. my when I well, I got out of racing, my driving myself back in two thousand. I ran two years in the street stocks, and then life happened. Uh, graduated high school, had to figure out where I was going in life with career and all that. There wasn't time for racing. Yep, and. Uh, Took a probably 12-year break, and I think it was 2012, I got back into it with another Super Street, that's what they called it, of my own. Bought the car off Joe Lanou, and um, ran it one race, and then that, in the fall, I bought it late in the season, and my brother had a motor, we threw a 305 in it, racing against 355, just something to get get back into it, um, and then... We, that winter, I brought it in the shop. I borrowed the jig off my uncle. I cut the rear clip off, cut all the bars off the front clip, redid it the way that I wanted it from stuff that I learned from modified racing and late model racing and working on other people's cars. And then uh, then I've raced since 2012 up to now. Yeah. And we've acquired a ton of parts. I didn't realize you had that much of a gap in between. I thought... I, felt, I don't know. I felt like it, you never left, to be honest with you. Well, no, I was I was always here working on other people's cars. Um, I mean, and I learned a lot over the years working on other people's cars. And again, you've pretty much worked on everything. Modifieds, pro stocks, late models, street stocks. Uh, uh, no pro stocks. Late models, modifieds. Okay, so yeah, because they were still late models when you were working with Lou. Yep. Cause, yep. Yeah, because he didn't switch over to pro stocks until what, probably four years ago, five years ago now? Yeah. And you were you were done helping and back into your own driving career at that point. Right. So. Yep. And we talked about it a little bit last night. So the only thing you really, so pro stocks you've never driven? Nope, never driven a pro stock. And modified you've never driven? I've uh, taken a modified out in one practice back in 2000. I was scared to death. <laughs> yeah. Always afraid to junk somebody else's equipment. I think yes. I, I think I asked you one time this last year. I was like, "When are we going to go mod racing?" And he's like, "Well, I like having a family." And my wife said she'd divorce me if I ever did. So I was like, she, "Okay, that's fair." I, I can race. I can race whenever I want, whatever I want. She just modified scare scare her to death. She well. doesn't. She just. She doesn't feel that they're safe, and, and they're just as safe as the rest. But it's. Yeah. I have to respect her opinion on that. It's the visual. Fair. It's fair. the visual. Open wheel, everything else. And yeah. I get it. That's fair. Fast. I, I get it. And plus, money. You know what I mean? Nobody wants to go broke racing, you know? Right. Plus. Yeah, no, no, no. It's, I mean, you can go broke racing mini stocks. Fair. That's a fair point. It's, that, that's her opinion. I, I respect that. She allows me to do what I do. Yeah. So Give and take. Week. Give and take. Yeah. Yeah. You well, guys are married. You know how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> know how that goes. Give and take. So you start 98, 99, so in a Camaro car, 01, and then you said, what, 2000, 2001-ish, somewhere in there, so you ran like three or four years and then got all done? It was uh, two seasons. Two seasons, so. Full seasons at Claremont, um, well, here. Yep. And then, um, actually, the first, the second, the first year or the second year, I can't remember, but my brother and would take me, and we ran up to Canaan two or three times. Yeah. We brought the car up on Sundays, that's when Canaan was still running. Sundays. Oh, no shit, I didn't realize they ran Sundays. Yeah. On the pavement, that was quite an event. My brother could tell you some stories about. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I feel like I with the Zulo clan, you could get realistically like a twelve-hour show and still not touch everything you guys Easy. have all done over the years. Yeah, but Easy. I'd love to attach a GoPro to one of you, like during a Friday night, just to see how wild it gets. And it's going to get even crazier this year. We'll touch on that a little bit. In yeah. a little bit later, but I right, so we'll hit that real quick. So I actually okay, told Heather, good. I told Heather that I want a Wi Fi enabled camera in the race shop. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So I can just watch it. So they were working on Dilly's car two weeks ago now, probably. Yep. And it's just brother, 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 <laughs> brother, <laughs> nephew, get in a car, brother. What do we, I'm like, this is gold. I would, yeah. I would drop Xfinity in a heartbeat if I could just have the live stream of that race shop in oh, my yeah, house. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah free of just f-bombs being dropped and all the other stuff it's just, it's gold pure gold yeah we ride my nephew pretty hard it's great yeah. it is fantastic the only bad part is is so that night that i'm there we're trying to get you guys we're trying to get the pedals and the steering wheel right and everything for him so they're like go get the seat so we dilly and i go out grab the seat come back in then we couldn't get it in 
because of the way the buyers are and the freaking leg rests and everything else. So freaking here comes Jimmy. Jesus Christ, you two boneheads. <laughs> Hold on a second. It smashes it in there and he goes, got it, boys. And then he walks off and heads up. I'm like, Jesus, cr- now I'm the jackass. Like, I'm going to be ridden just like freaking Dilly is. I mean, anybody's subject to. Oh, it doesn't matter. When you walk into that shop, that shop or your guys's trailer, it doesn't. It's free game. You better have some thick skin. Yeah, yeah. my brother's better. a little rougher than I am. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's fair. You just that's got fair. your one liners every now and again. There's just boop, got them. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Usually that's when I hide. <laughs> Time to go. Yeah. So did you pick up any wins in your first couple of years? I know it was, and I'm not saying that it's not stout competition now. My first but, couple of years, the first year, no. Um, back then, um, as a 15 year old kid, it was the 40 lap. The, the, the street stocks would run a 40 lap extra distance race. Um, for and it was because normally we'd run 25 lap features. Yep. 20 No, they were 20 lap features. They weren't very long because back then they had street stocks, mini stocks, late models, pro stocks, modifieds. They had five divisions in the full mod- card. Full card. So they would run 20 lap features for us, and then the, the big race was the 40 lap extra distance race. My first year, um, my brother had stopped racing halfway through the season. Um, some, some, I can't even remember what happened or why he stopped. I think he had en- engine trouble or something like that. Yeah. <clears throat> and so he he ended up, because my uncle was busy with the other car that he owned that Nick Taylor drove. Okay, yep. Yeah. And um, so we ended up bringing the car that I was driving for my uncle up to my parents' house where I was living and my brother was living at the time. And he kind of took over the crew chief and, and taking care of the car. And we ended up painting the car because it was a god-awful maroon. <laughs> <laughs> god-awful. Oh, it was ugly. Ugly. But I didn't care. I was in a race car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would have drove a wheelbarrow if they let me. Absolutely. And uh, so um, he painted it. And then we uh, the 40-lapper was that week. Brand new paint job. I had sucked all season long. Started on the pole for it. I led the first 23 laps of the, the 40 lapper, and that was the highlight of <laughs> highlight of his. <laughs> yeah. I thought I was God that night, and ended up getting <laughs> getting spun out or spun myself out or something. Hit the wall and ended the night early, but it was a good time. Yeah, and that was. And then the second year, that winter, my brother built a brand new car. My father um, spent the long dollar. And got us a good Hannaford racing engine. Yep. That we blew up on practice day. Oh, <laughs> yikes. Jesus. And then um, Goodwin stood behind it, built us a, built us another motor, and uh, I won one one feature that summer. And that was the highlight. Of I was going to say, I bet that was big. That yeah. was big because back then you, you had to, six cars on a given night went home. I remember the, the year before, I... I was the Concy winner like once. Yes. <laughs> See, it's in his blood. Yeah, but every for the first five weeks, oh, I was in the Concy, and sometimes we go to the car, and I didn't race that night. Yeah, yeah. It was, which is tough as a rookie because seat time, seat time, seat time. Right, and I had I was only fifteen, so I'd never even driven a street car before. Oh. Didn't start in go karts. Didn't do any of that. Just never driven a seat street car or anything. It was go to the racetrack. Go to the racetrack, hop in a race car, and. Is this normal? Does this feel normal? I, yeah, right. you lose your tight. I have no clue. <laughs> oh, Am I yeah. even going fast mm-hmm. enough? Who, I didn't know. It was wow. trial and error. I guess I would have just assumed you started like everybody else did at that period in time where you had to be 17, 18, 19. I wouldn't have guessed you started at 15. That's yeah, no, I was 15. And then the following year, like I said, we built a new car with one, one a feature. Yep. It was the highlight of my career to that point. And then 12-year gap in between racing. Yep. And again, like so, you said at that point in time, you were helping out on a modified for a few years there. And then, what year did you get you and Luke get hooked up when you started helping him? Was that like 06, 07, somewhere around there? Oh, oh eight. Was it that? So, yeah, started helping Luke in oh eight. Um, that was a lot of fun. We we traveled a lot, went to a lot of races, and learned a lot there too. Because I mean, he bought a Crazy Horse car. We went up to Crazy Horse, learned a lot about setup from them, um, and just. Traveling different tracks, different setups, different. Um, how to make? I mean, 
how to compete, yep. tires, tire management, all that stuff. And that was a cast of characters that you guys had on that team. Oh, yes. Because it was you, Luke, yep. Chowder, yep. John Hartford. <laughs> yep. Chowder. Weld was on there for a while, wasn't he? Yeah, he helped out a little bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we, we had a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> they had a lot of cronies back in the day. <laughs> it, was always, it was always comical, too. Oh, yes. Yep. So what drove you to get back behind the wheel in the 2012-2011 era? Um, I had my own shop, had all the tools, decided that it was time to go do it on my own. Yep. So I bought the car, was just going to dabble in it. And you guys all know, everybody that races knows, as soon as you... Uh, Once, turns into twice, turns into a full season. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's kind of, kind of like um, this last winter, I told my wife I was... I was going to drive the street stop when I could get out of work early enough. And <laughs> You did well getting out early enough because yeah. I think you made every show. <laughs> I know. I, I, I told her in the, in the springtime that I was going to run the car when I could get out of work early enough to do that. My brother was going to run it on the weeks that I couldn't. And I managed to make it every single week. You did. I was like, how amazing is that, she says. <laughs> because you had the 10Z and then the 10NH, depending on who was going to drive. Right. And I don't think I ever saw the 10Z out there. Yeah. Yes, uh, once. once. Once? Yeah. yeah. Jimmy drove it once. You were at a football game. Yep. My son Aiden plays high school football. That would be why I didn't see it. Because I was also you were also football at the same football game. At the same football game. <laughs> you coach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah you point. didn't turn around and see, see the Costi winner standing behind you? Oh, to be fair. No, you don't turn around. Yeah. Oh, perfect. That's a good spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah. So. Uh, and fair. But. <clears throat> and you, and again, so you called them, I know they were called super streets when you got back into it in 2012, but it was basically, did you run an act, the act late model here for a couple of years too then? Was yeah, it after that? I ran the super <clears throat> street for two seasons and then I, I, Wanted a late model. Yep. Cause, I don't know. Because you're a fool, but yeah, keep yeah, going. Yeah. Bought an act late model, sold the Super Street, which I wish I had never sold the car because, I, I mean, I built the car myself pretty much other than the center section, and it was a really fast car when I got rid of it, even when it wasn't cheated up. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and then, uh, it um, turned really good, handled really good, but like an idiot, I wanted to go faster. Sold that, bought an act late model. Struggled with that for a first season. Um, ended up selling that <clears throat> that car and uh, bought a fairly new distance late model and um, ran that for a couple years. We got we got a couple wins with it. Tried to tried the tour out. Made a couple tour shows. Got loaded up. Sent home from a couple tour shows because that's stout competition. Yeah. And then uh, is that the same one you took to Loudon? Yep, same car I took to Loudon. I. You probably correct me if I'm wrong, but he would be the first driver we've had on that race. Nope, I didn't loud. race that loud. Nope, nope. Well, you, you practiced. Practiced loud. Yeah, practiced. Ask, ask him about it. Yep. Well, that was, that was, <laughs> I've I've heard different variations of this story from different people, so I wanted to hear from you. Okay, uh, we went down to Loudon. Um, I've got. I got a business. I've got three kids. Yeah. Got to get up, go to work on Monday. When you're zinging down the straightaway at 130 miles an hour, yeah. it just wasn't for me. When you're going down the straightaway, <laughs> you're thinking about work, your wife, your kids. All and the pro and the problem is, is you have all that time <laughs> down yeah. those straightaways yeah. to yeah. think you, about it. You, big. you can tell yourself stories going down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, it just wasn't for me. I could never get comfortable enough to drive the car into the corner as deep as you needed to. Right. To even. Make it onto the speed charts. I, I, I forget her name, the girl that runs the act tour. The Tina? Team. Tina. Yeah. I got out of the car after the, the mock heat races, and I said, Tina, don't even bother sending me a letter if you want me to come down here because I'm not coming. <laughs> this place isn't for me. Yeah. And the problem is, is like, like he said, so right, you got a business, you got kids, you got a wife, you got all that you got to be concerned about. So him saying you can't drive it in deep enough, I can remember going down there on a practice day and watching some of the guys from around here go, okay, hey, I'm lifting here. I think I'm doing pretty good. And he watched a guy by the name of Patrick LaPearl. Yeah. Well, LaGrom LaPearl had coconuts because he was about 15 car lengths deeper into the corners than anybody else was and making it stick. But there's something with that right foot in your brain that just goes, can't, yeah. nope. Can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> can't do it. And I, I said that to my brother because he went down and helped me when we were down there because he had his own late model at that point in time. And I'm like, 
I, I just can't do it. And I'm like, you got your fire suit, go put it on. Go for it. And he's like, no, nah, I don't want to wreck your car. And he went down the following year, and he was fine at it. He didn't have a problem with it. And But I can remember two years, three years prior to that, no, four years prior to that, because I was helping Luke on his act late model, going down there with him. And I was spotting for him at the time. I'm like, Luke, you got to drive it in deeper. The guys are driving. He's like, I'm trying. I'm trying. And it's, it's I don't know. We don't. We don't get paid to do it. We're we're in our thirties at this point in time. Yeah. There's no chance of us ever going to NASCAR. <laughs> it's Friday night Friday night thunder. Yeah. I mean, if we had gone down there when we were 18, 19, 20 years old. Probably would have been fine. Probably would have been perfectly fine because we had nothing to worry about. Right. And and there was always that dream that you might might make it. Catch somewhere. a ride somewhere, right. yeah. Which that's never gonna happen anymore. So it's yeah. it's be like a dilly who's just got no fear. Right. No fear, no consequences when you're behind the wheel of a race car. Because none of it comes out of his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My dad will fix it. Yeah. My uncle will fix it. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, yeah, I mean, he's hilarious. got two of the best that he can around here. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. And again, like and like you just alluded to, so on the spotter stand, it's really easy to tell them that they got to drive it in deeper. You got to get on it. You got to get on it quicker. You got to j- just do this, do that. It is so goddamn easy when you have that headset on to tell them how to drive that race car. And yeah. it's weird because when you're because I was sitting up in the stands that day, and when you're watching, when you're watching those guys go around, you're like, they don't look like they're going super. F- they don't look like they're going super fast because you're so high up, right? I'm like. Why? What's what's happening? Why is everybody falling? Because there's like the f- the front five or whatever are just Gone. rolling down there, dude, yeah. rolling, and then everybody else is all spread out. I'm like, why can't? But then, 130 miles an hour, man, I would be like, ooh, ooh. and I, I'm not, I'm not 100 percent positive. You're, that's what you're. You're probably close though. Still, yeah, yeah. I mean, you got to be relatively in the ballpark, right? 130. No, that's that's why fast. The best, best race car driver is sitting in the grandstands. Hey, 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 man. Anybody can drive in the grandstands. <laughs> Clear? Yeah. <laughs> right well, there. Why'd he do that? Yeah. I'd have done this. <laughs> oh, that's easy to say after the fact there. Buddy. Absolutely is. Yeah. And again, the best thing that you can do on like when they do that spring race with pass ACT and yeah. mini stocks and all. Again, we we went down. We sat up in the grandstands again. It looks like they're crawling right along. The best thing you can do is go stand on that white line right by the fence and let them yeah. zing by you. And then you realize, ooh. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're moving. They're, they're motoring. Yep. And we watched some guys take some tough licks last year. And that's the problem is, you know, like your brother alluded to getting behind the wheel of your car. You spin out and back it into the fence down there. That's a car. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's not a clip. That's not like here or Manadnock or somewhere where you're like, ah, we're going to bang out some body panels, maybe yeah. put a clip on it if it's real bad. That's a car. Oh, yeah. That's it's junk. Dude, we watched that mini stock. I can't remember who it was, but we watched a mini stock down there last year. Absolutely. T- it was the barrels. Ray King Jr. Was it Ray? It was Ray. I wanted to say it was Ray. Yeah, he, back to, he hit the rear quarter on him. Dude, them. he cleared those barrels. He hit so fucking hard. It was, I was like, oh my God. Yeah, and he and, was fine. Yeah, he was, yeah, luckily he was fine. But I was like, and then Jimmy Renfro backed it into the fence too. Yeah. Tore his fucking car up. I was like, we're tearing up a lot of equipment today, boys. <laughs> but that's a, a lot and, of money. And that's the problem though, is like, you hate to say it. It's not even just like a Loudon or something like that. Sometimes those big races just group that together. Yeah. Again, you look at Buffon down at Dillon last weekend. He needs to put a clip on his car. Yeah. <laughs> hit the end of the front stretch wall. Also, we got to check out that tow truck, too. And the tow truck. He hit the tow truck. Ooh, yeah, oh, yeah. You yeah. smoked yeah. it, dude. Almost killed that guy. Whoever that guy is that was standing next to the car. Athletic. I've never seen somebody move that fast, and his knees were to his chest <laughs> running away from that truck. <laughs> you need to like, get that video so that way you can show your players next year. This is how you run, boys. Mobile, man. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes those big races just bring it out in people. Oh yeah. How do how do you qual? I know how you qualify for that, but like, do you have to get invited down to that, or can you like used to be to go down? Used to be. How does that work? Back back when I was doing it, um, you had to um, show up to a certain number of ACT races, right? And and try to race and race, and then you would get a letter to invite you down to practice and okay. then depending on how you did at practice they selected the 24 cars that they were going to bring okay. down to race okay so all right now where it's the first race of the year if uncle jerry went and built one tonight right he could just go down a race there's no invite only 
So the invite, really? yeah, the invite only used to be when it was Cup Weekend in September every year when they'd run it on Friday night, Saturday morning, whatever they Saturday afternoon. Saturday afternoon, yeah. Because that one year we ran into darkness issues right. where they finally shut it down. But that was the invite only. And then the last three years when they've done it in the April show at the beginning of the season, which there's just, no NASCAR down there that week. Correct, right? free games, right, right. right. Yeah. But you've also seen over the 10 years that they've been down there, the first year it was 43 guys got invited and probably 20-some-odd cars got left at home. Yeah. And it kind of – I don't want to say dwindles, but the allure of going down to Loudon kind of went away because, again, you can allude to it. How much did practice day cost, do you think, roughly? Uh, about $1,600. Jesus tires, Christ. Fuel, tip passes. For practice. Oh, we – American Tire, I think we were running American Tires. At the time, yeah. At the time, they, they paid the car, the driver, the owner, and crew chief, they paid their way in. But anybody extra that wanted to go, they, they had to pay to get in. And then, um, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't remember exactly, but I believe they paid for three, and then everybody it else paid to get in. And sounds like right, about right. $1,600 for food. New bot. I mean, and at that point, I mean, it, I say 1600 that's just for the day, but at that point... To go down to loud and you put a brand new body on. Right. At that point, I think it was twenty two hundred bucks. Yeah. I mean, we're talking almost ten years ago now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Your new body gears, because I'm sure you guys didn't have those gears just laying around. No. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. Buy gears. <laughs> Different springs. You didn't have laying around. So you're realistically probably for that one practice day when you figure in the body, which again you've you've used the body since then, so whatever. Yeah. But you're probably looking at a five thousand dollar day to get all the parts, pieces, the car ready, and everything just to go down there for a day. Yep. <laughs> but oh we got to God. play. And, you and got to race at Loudon. Got to race at Loudon. You got to feel like the big boys. You were in the garage yeah. area. You Fair. unloaded your tools. Yeah. You were the show for the day. Yeah. It, it was a lot of fun. I'd do it again. It, at at that age, not knowing, I would yeah. definitely do it again. Yeah, but it was a lot of fun. Well, that's interesting uh, <laughs> because I don't think you're the only one that didn't. No, there's, there's plenty. There's, of there's, things a, there's just, a bunch of people that are like, I'm a short track guy. Yeah. You know, I'm not a I'm not a big track guy. Which there's nothing wrong with that yeah, though. Nothing wrong with that. I like short tracks. Anyway. And uh, um, here say it made me going down there when we came back that. We went down, it was on a Wednesday, I think. Wednesday or Thursday, yeah. Wednesday or Thursday. We raced Friday nights. Yeah. Brought the lay model back, switched it back over. We didn't change the body because we knew we weren't going back to that. <laughs> Just the new body on it. And I came back here and I mopped the field up. And yep. the late model feature that night. I mean, there was only, back then, there was only 10 ACT late models here. But starting near the back, and I, 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 I mopped the field up that night. I passed everybody, I think, and won by five, ten car lengths. Just going to Loudon, not driving it in deep enough at Loudon, but taught me how to drive it in deeper at Claremont, better car control. Right. You, you pick the throttle up. It, it's the concept of speed yeah. that you have. Um, not wrong. Yeah, kind of like the iron sharpens iron type of deal. It's like, yep. if it's too hard, well, it's probably good because it's going to make you better somewhere else. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. All right. right. Let's take a quick commercial break. Apex Racing, located at 972 West Swansea Road in Swansea, New Hampshire, wants to remind you that their doors remain open Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And don't forget that Apex Racing is a Spafco race chassis dealer. Apex Racing is product from All-Star Performance, Wildwood, Sweet, Quartermaster, Powermaster, Long Acre, Campfires, Components, Hansel Races, and much, much more. Apex Racing, we'll see you in Victory Lane. All right, so you kind of alluded to a championship might have been taken away from you there. Oh, boy. DJ's been waiting for weeks to talk to you about this. <laughs> so we, you were in a super street at the time. Yes. You won quite a few races that summer, did yes. fairly well. Yes. And then come to championship night, you were the championship man on the racetrack. I was a champion for all of... 20 minutes? Yeah, we'll go with 20 minutes. <laughs> 20 minutes. <laughs> Best 20 minutes ever. All the way to tech. And then, then we went to tech, and they found a carburetor that I had put on because it was championship night. Um, this, this is a long story, because, and I hope you're ready for this. Tom, so, listen, listen, we got time. Yeah, we got Jay. time. It goes all the way back into June, July of, of the race season. Um, Dick Plant was race director, and we were racing against uh, John Meany. 
he was in the division. My brother was in the division, Craig Smith, Ben Poland. And one night we had a little altercation on the racetrack with uh, John Meany. And which I wouldn't, I wouldn't recognize the man if he walked in here now. <laughs> so long. But we had an altercation on the racetrack. Um, he, was, he was a tough car to, car to pass. He ran a, a weird line coming out of two. And that car that I had there, I could, I could swing into one and two high, cut it down, and just drive up underneath people coming out of one and two. And he had figured out how to take that line away or whatever. And my crew and I would always accuse him of mirror driving us because we were allowed to run mirrors, yep. videos back then. And um, one night, come out of two, I was under him. He came down further, spun him out, got put to the back. He's coming up pit road at the end of the end of the feature, and one of my crew guys, Joe Brown, and and Jesse Howe approached his car. And, <laughs> well, needless to say, Jesse Howe took the raw end of that deal because as Joe was ripping his rearview mirror off, it came off quick, and he punched Jesse right in the eye. <laughs> Jesus, that sounds about right. <laughs> But, so, needless to say, we got disqualified for that night. Oh. And we got no points, no pay. Or we got last place points for it, because if we had got no points, no pay, there would have been no way we were in it. So we got last, no, no pay, last place points. <laughs> Continue on, last night of racing. We're going into the last night, and there was four of us um, going into the last feature that if we were all within two points of each other. I think Ben and I were tied... Craig Smith and my brother were tied two points behind us, if I remember correctly. I, I could be wrong. You're yeah. close, I think, yeah. And and then uh, we're going into that last race, and I had, I had bought this carburetor on, on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> and in the description of the – it said, cheated up 500 CFM Holly two-barrel carburetor. Perfect. <laughs> bought it up, and I, I had put it on the car. Well, Joe and my wife both told me to – Take it off the car. That morning, I snuck out to the garage before my wife and, and Joe had showed up. I love it. I absolutely love <laughs> it. Changed the carburetor back over. Well, I, I, I might have lied through my teeth to them, told them that it wasn't on the car and all that. And We went out there and, and, and the feature, Ben Pullen, I think, was leading it. I got underneath him coming out of two. Might have slid up into him, spun him out. So we both go to the rear. And Joe was on my spotter on the radio, and he says to me. Quiet fella, you know, really reserved. <laughs> <laughs> the judge. He says, you only have to finish third and you win the championship. And I, I remember coming over the radio and said, F that, I'm going to win this show. Well, drove by Craig, my brother, and Craig, won the race. Did burn out. You were the man. I was on top of the freaking world then. Went up into tech, and uh, they pulled the carburetors. Well, the tech guy looked at me and said, no. And long story short, my father-in-law, hey. being the head of tech, um, he says, you had to do this to me. You're going to make me disqualify you in front of everybody. <laughs> Sorry, I had to win. Yeah. And he disqualified me for that. Illegal carburetor, which I was a champion for 20 minutes. 20 minutes. <laughs> but in, in my defense. Such and, a good and, story. And anybody that's worked on my car or, or been around me knows that I'm, I'm cheap. If I had just spent the money because a good, a really good VDL carburetor or Bill Pink carburetor back then, I think was a really good one, was 1200 bucks. Yep. I bought this cheated up carburetor for 500 bucks on eBay. Well, when we went to go ACT racing, we had to take the motor because it was the same 603 motor, crate motor. I've run a crate motor ever since I got back into racing. Yep. And we had to take it to get it sealed. They dynoed it before they rebuilt it with the cheated up carburetor, the house carburetor, and a really good um, VDL carburetor I bought. The cheated up carburetor that I was running that was got me disqualified made less horsepower than the carburetor that I had been running all season long that was legal. Oh, <laughs> man. So I, I lost a championship just for some, what, something. Principal. Paper. Fucking oh. principal, Uncle Jer. God. 
So, that is such a great story. That's uh, probably the best story we've heard so far. Yeah. I knew most of it. I didn't know the story that the regular carburetor was basically better. That, That's hilarious. The, the only thing that was different with it was the torque curve picked up 200 RPM sooner on the the cheated up carburetor. Yep. So if I had just dropped a little bit of gear, you would have been fine. I would have been perfectly fine. Because between the two carburetors, when we were on the track, I kept telling Joe, "This one's flat off the corner. This one's flat off the corner. Put the other one back on it, and it's it's good off the corner. It's yep. good off the corner." There was your answer. It was my answer. It was the, it was the gear and in the car. No shit. But it was. Ignorance. The best part of that to me is you snuck out. <laughs> that, that is. That's, that is. Oh, <laughs> trust me, my wife and Joe still ride me about that to this day. And I just remind Joe, I wouldn't have had to do it if you hadn't ripped Meanie's mirror off back in June. Well, that's, I guess. That is fair. fair. All you would probably had to that's do was start championship point. night. Pretty much. That's a, that's fantastic. Oh, man. That's such a good story. And again, so you, you just alluded to it. You ran with Jimmy. Yep. In the super streets. And then yep. did you guys both move up at the same time to those act late models? Or was he a year later? <clears throat> Cause I remember, I, I, I think I remember you guys running ACT cars against each other. Yeah, we, we did. I think. Was he a year later? No, I think he, he moved up with you, right? No, I think he ran super streets a year after. And then, then I can't remember 100% though. Or I think he might've gotten done in, Built a late model at the same time. Because I vaguely remember you and your brother in ACT late models running side by side one night for like fucking eight laps of like beginning of a race. And I'm like, one of them should just drop to the bottom. But you guys were running side by side. Oh, no, there was no, no way. Way. And you were pulling away from third place. The both of you were. And I'm like, how in the hell? And you guys never touched each other. No. Nope. Never touched each other. No, I mean, I can't remember if it was the following year that he got a late model and I got a late model because... When I sold my car and got a late model, my first late model, I remember him helping me and taking, we took the car up to, to um, Canaan yep. at first because I don't remember if they were running ACT late models weekly here or every other week. I think it was every other week here and wasn't it weekly up there? Yeah, I think that's what yeah. it was, something like that. And um, then he helped me that first season. We struggled. And then um, after that, he got one and then I got the new car. Yep. And then did that for a few years, and then back into the street stocks, right? I did that for a few years. Then, uh, then Joe got a car, and um, life and work took over for a little while again. And took a couple. I think it's been three or four years. Yep. Four, I think it was four years that I took off before this past season racing. You did win one and judge the judge's car though, didn't you? Here? Yeah. Um he had run yeah. he had run pretty much most of the season and then there was an open show or something. Late the, in the season. Late in the season. And he said, You take the car out. And luck of the draw, I drew the pole and started on the pole in the heat race, won the heat race and it was a fifty lap feature and won it. Won it. Yeah. Yeah. So what happened to that? This is kind of irrelevant but what happened to joe's car because i remember walking by your garage and seeing it outside of your garage for a while well he had that hamke car and then um which was the one that i wanted that yeah. we we ended up it was a rat car and him and i put a put it on the jig and we put a um steering box in it and he had bought the funny story is he had bought the car he had bought the car that was in the bushes that um is becoming Dylan's late model. Right. Which, and yeah. then he was going to build that one, and then he came across the deal, uh, I think, from Andrew Martell and bought this um, the Hamke car, which was a better car at the time mm -hmm. to convert into um, his street stock. And then uh, he, uh, he ran the Hamke car for a couple seasons, I think two. I think a, yep. a season and a half he ran it mm. and then he um everybody was going to straight rail cars in the super streets mm -hmm. and they uh he found this uh, port city car it's a straight rail car so he abandoned the hamke car and he went to the port city straight rail car which yesterday just yesterday my brother and i put a box in that car and jack and bolts in the back of it for him and uh it's that Hamke car sitting on a trailer outside my shop, getting ready to have the rest of the parts stripped off of it, and I believe Joe's got that sold. 
Oh, okay. So he's not coming back with a car. Well, no. no, no, no he's, he's got the Port oh, City. The Port City car got the steering box put in it. Yeah, he's got a beautiful Port City car that he's putting together. The judge makes his return to the track. Is that what you're saying, Maybe. Jerry? No, yeah, that's what. Who? Cool. It's yeah. it's Judge Joe Brown. Today he's gonna be racing. He's gonna win a championship, and then three days from now it's gonna be fuck that place. I ain't racing there ever again, and nothing ever happened. <laughs> Sorry, Joe, but it's true. Yeah. <laughs> you might pay for that. Yeah, that's fine. Say. <laughs> yeah, Joe, that was DJ. Oh, I, all that listen, I rode him. I rode him all summer. He had, he had a bunch of uh, his t-shirts from his windshield business. He had a bunch of yeah. t-shirts, so he handed a bunch of them out. So I rode him all. I rode him all summer long. I said, Jesus Christ, Golden Cross gives you enough business that the amount of windshields we do through you, you think you give give a guy a free t-shirt. That's it. Every week, <laughs> fuck, I forgot it. Damn it, shit. Look. <laughs> Finally, of course, his daughter and my son go to school together at the Pleasant Street Preschool. Well, one day I go and pick up the backpack for Ryan and pick him up from school, and there's the t-shirt in the backpack. <laughs> yeah, the boy, Judge. Dude, he's here every week. Oh, yeah. Uh, he, Whether he's racing or not, he's here. He yeah. has a passion for racing. He's just gotta gotta get the car done and get it to the track. Yeah. That's great. And again, you alluded to a little bit earlier in the episode. Yeah, so let's talk about it. Well, let's uh, hold on. So last year, your plan was wow. if you could get out early. And again, we talked about it with Jimmy. So Jimmy's yeah. like, yeah. So basically, Jer's going to run it from here until here. And then it's paving season. So we won't be able to do it. So I'm going to get behind the wheel. And then we're going to do this. And maybe Dylan might get into it. Maybe this, maybe that. And we hit like August. <laughs> Hadn't mid- <laughs> haven't missed a race. Yeah. No, no. Haven't missed a race. And you guys, again... I thoroughly enjoy stopping by your trailer every single week because it's just you guys have fun doing this. You take it serious and you do a great job at it, but you guys have fun while doing it. And we talked about it a little bit yesterday. You get to get to be there with your brother, with your nephew, with your wife, with your kids. Everybody's there. It's a big family. The one thing I want to talk about. So your brother took that car out and dried the racetrack one night with it. Yep. Oh God! It might have broke the pedals right off the car. Well, my brother was driving the racetrack up, and he, my, my brother likes to drift a little bit, and he got a little bit into three and four a little too hot, and started to head for the fence. And I think when he was pushing on the brake pedal a little too hard, he broke the pedals, snapped them right off. Jesus! So you guys took off to back to the shop. Yep. Yep, we, we loaded the car up because, I mean, there was we tried to fix it with hose clamps and all that. It just wasn't working. So we took off, ran back to his shop, ripped the pedals out, welded them back in, and poked a hole in the, the front of my trailer because we were towing the trailer with a one-ton that night, and then the mad tear, if you cut it too sharp, it'll jackknife. I ripped the hole in the front of the trailer. It was great. Yeah, oh, yeah, it was awesome. It was great. It was this. <laughs> it was great watching from the outside because oh, Jimmy, I'm so this was earlier in the night because we're sitting in the I'm sitting up in Heather's tower. So it's me, my wife, Heather, and then somebody else is up there. Jimmy comes sprinting over. You're watching them push the car and he goes, if you see Dylan, tell him he's on his fucking own because I got to go help. <laughs> I got to go help Jer. I'm like, OK. And he's like, just fucking tell him and then their trailer's gone i'm like all right so dilly comes walking over and i'm like what the hell happened there he's like ah dad broke the pedals no big deal they're just gonna go weld them on they'll be back in a few minutes my nephew gets not excited about (laughs) nothing (laughs) just calm as can be i'm like okay and then all of a sudden here comes uncle jr cranks that thing right back in the spot puts a hole in the trailer they unload i'm like holy smokes yikes and and the worst part about it is that my nephew comes over and says hey uncle jr you know, if you cut it too sharp with the one ton, you're going to hit the front of the trailer. Because on the way to the racetrack, he was driving the one ton, and I'm like, hey, you want to make sure you don't take cut too sharp? <laughs> Oh, what a awesome. troll! Yeah. <laughs> Instant yeah. karma right there. What a troll! <laughs> Got him. Yeah. Oh man! Yeah, Uncle Jared, run your mouth. <laughs> that is hilarious. Yeah. Oh my god. And again, you guys actually swapped cars midway through the season last year didn't you you started with the metric car we started with a metric car you hated it <laughs> i all went along because i remember my old super street was a metric car but we had a three link and a pan hardware which i'm like that stock four link can't be that much different i mean as far as being able to generate bite yep and as we're going through the summer and uh, you come off the corner and you can ask trevor rock because him and i talked a lot this summer about why we can't get these freaking things to go and you just you can't generate the same kind of bite with the metric car as you can a Camaro. And I'm a competitor. I don't like to come up to the racetrack to know that I'm going to finish in the top five. I want to come up to the racetrack and know that when I unload a car, I have a fighting chance of winning. Absolutely. And halfway through this, uh, I want to say it was August. Yeah. I'm like, 
find me a find me a Camaro. Find me a Camaro. We're, me and my brother, and I think, uh, I think were you there? I was, because you were willing to pay me to go pick it up that yeah, day. Yeah. <laughs> my brother gets online, and I'm, uh, he or earlier in that week, I had sent him a picture of a Baldwin chassis that was for sale online, and I'm like, will this one work? And he's like, no, 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 and. I think he just wanted to finish the season out with the metric car. Oh, he did. Bad. He knew He knew this winter we were building a brand new Camaro. And I'm like, I am not suffering the rest of the season. And we are down there. We were working on the car or whatever. We had done, just got done doing a setup on the metric car. Changed everything like we did every freaking week. I mean, we, I, I put more springs in that car than I've ever put tour racing Ugh. in a car. Changing springs, changing angles, changing this. And still could not get that car to go. We got it close, but... We were just never, I mean, a 15.3, I think, was the best time I ever cut with that car. Yeah. It was uh, 16.3. 16.3, yeah. 16.3s. And finally, that, we were standing there shooting the shit, and he's on uh, Facebook Marketplace. He's like, well, here's one, 2,500 bucks. It, That's it, the day I was there. It, it's, it's in Maine. I'm like, perfect. Who, who's going? And he looks at me, and he's like, can you go? I'm like... <laughs> I know. Family vacation. I'm like, what's more important, family vacation or me winning a race? Fair point. Fair point. Family vacation. Yeah. <laughs> family vacation. Did I ended up having yeah. my uncle the next day go up five hour rides to. Which was the problem. It was, it was a five hour one way. He Yuck. left. At, he he flagged for me all day because for my paving company he he um, does a traffic control for us. Flagged all day until about noon time. We only had a small road to do that day. Flagged all day until noon, and then he headed to Maine. And he picked the car up. I think he got back at like 2 o'clock in the morning with the car. That weekend, that Friday night, we ran the Metro car, because that was on a Thursday, I think it yep. was. And um, we ran the Metro car. And you, had, you had the following week off from racing. The street stocks were somewhere for the Battle of the Belt. Yep, the street stocks were somewhere for the Battle of the Belt. And, but that weekend, my brother and Josh, I ended up taking the family, and we went out to camp. And uh, my brother and Josh got the motor in it, got it pretty much ready to go. I think we did the setup on it Monday or Tuesday night. And then Wednesday we came up and we to shake it down, practice it. Went out there in a the Camaro and I came in from the racetrack and I got out and I said to my brother, I said, why the hell have you been punishing me all <laughs> summer long? <laughs> it, it's just, a, it's a completely different animal to drive. Yeah. It, and we ended up ended up finishing third, I think, once or twice. Led a bunch of laps, won a couple of heat races. And this car, compared to what a new one is going to be, is this car was pretty much similar to what I started back in '98 with. Really? Yeah. So the the technology and stuff that'll be in the new car, we should be able to to, to compete fairly well. Nice. So. And so now we'll come up to this winner. So yeah. now. You and Jimmy are building a brand new car for you. Yep. Brand new. Brand new. It's on the jig now. It's on the jig. I was going to say, it is on the jig now because I was there yesterday. Yep. So you're doing that. Dilly's getting his late model sportsman together. Yep. Your daughter. Beaner. Yep. Beaner's getting Dilly's championship car, um, which she's excited about. And then um, my son is getting Aiden. a new car that Jimmy's going to build for him. Oh, Brandon, that, so... The silver Nissan that my brother has sent okay. up. We're going to put a cage in that for Aiden. Nice. So he'll have a brand new car. Him and, him and Chloe will be in the same division. And What's Mama think of that? Mama's stressed. Mama's got to be stressed for Beaner. No, Mama's stressed for all. <laughs> she's, she's just... Uh, my wife's a very nervous person. That has a long line why I'm not allowed to have modified. <laughs> yeah, fair. Yeah. And she's she's very stressed with with all of them. I, I don't I don't think she watches much of the races. No. Pace, pace is a lot. Pace is a lot. And as soon as something happens, we do this. She closes her eyes. She closes her eyes, covers <laughs> her eyes up, or whoever's sitting beside her gets a really the death squeeze. Yeah. So. Yeah. So four cars four is going to come out of the Zulo stable. Four cars coming out of the Zulo stables. Um, I don't know if my brother knows what he signed himself up for. Yeah. He loves it. Oh, yeah. As much as he bitches and pisses and moans about it and grumbles and friggin' plays like the Grinch, he friggin' loves it. Oh, yeah. He lives for it. That's he... that's going to be wild on Friday night. Oh, yeah. There's going to be so many moving parts. Oh, yeah. Yeah, three divisions, four cars. Yeah. And is so are all four cars running 
full seasons? Yep. Or is it? Uh, well, three out of the four, right? Because Aiden will have football if he yeah. chooses so yeah. in the fall. Fair. Fair, fair, fair. Once football season starts, Aiden, I mean, if we can work around the schedule, he'll race when he can yeah. once football starts. Yeah. But the other three will. It's going to be wild, man. If the cars live that long. We're looking. Uh, that's fair too. That's fair. So too. listen, I, I'm going to throw Dilly under the bus here for a second. So Dilly's famous thing right now is you want to go halves. You want to go thirds. You want to go halves. You want to go thirds. You want to go halves. So I was winding all them up probably two, three weeks ago, and I'm sending them stackers from Facebook Marketplace. Hey, you guys need this? It'll fit two or three cars in it. Finally, Jimmy texts me and he goes, "Unless you're fucking going quarters with this, stop it." <laughs> all right. Yep. I'm all done. Yeah. Funny. Funny thing is, though, the halves on the on the late model. There's my brother's half, my half, and there's no half of Dilly. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out thirds isn't going so well for that one, huh? Oh, no. That's funny. It's all good. We do it because we love it. We don't do it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because you ain't going to make money. No. Yeah. God, no. So my big question then, my last burning question for you, is it going to stay the 10 New Hampshire or are you going to go back to the 46? It's going to stay the 10. It will. Family, family number. All right. Now, huh? Until... Until something happens or whatever, as far as another car in the division or whatever. Yeah. Me and my nephew or my brother. So you'll be 10. Dilly will be the 16 again. Yep. Beaner picked a number yet? 07. 07. And Aiden's got the 05. 05. Yep. Nice. Yep. I got one last oh, story. One question. One story. <laughs> one story. It's actually, I actually have two, but I'm picking between the two. So we were. Uh, we were by the stands in the pits one night and you were sitting on this concrete slab and somebody, I don't know who it was. Apparently you guys hadn't seen each other in a long time. And he said, Hey, how you doing? And you're like, Oh, good. And he goes, Oh, your car out here. And you're like, yeah, it's right over there. He goes, Oh, you you're going fast. And you go, ha. Huh, and you laugh. And I chuckled at you laughing and you turn to me and he goes, Oh Yeah. Where's your car? And I was like, <laughs> that's, I mean, that's fair. That's fair. I just wanted you to know that I was laughing at your laugh, not laughing at the fact. Look at back that you were fast enough. Six months later and he's still like, I shit, he remembers. There. Well, no. Well, I left there and I was like, oh, that's why he said it. He thought I was laughing at. The fact that I wasn't the fast. The fact that he wasn't fast. <laughs> the fact that he wasn't fast. So I just wanted you to know that. It's all good. I, did, I, I don't take any. Personally, because yeah. uh, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, I would have taken it personally just because racing was life. But yeah. now there's so much more to life. I mean, I want to be competitive. I want to win, but I don't. Yeah, It's not personal. If I'm not going to win, well, so be it. Listen, this guy right here was so excited the night he won his concert because he was finally going to make the race day recap on Facebook. Was finally going to fucking make it. Yeah. And what is the one night that Toby looks at me and it was late when we left there. He goes, man, doing a race re night recap this week. I'm oh. like, oh. <laughs> yeah. No offense, Tobes, but I'm throwing you right under the bus as soon as Fucking Uncle Jer. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Jesus. Had to go home. You know, that's all funny. Done is race day recap, Jeremy. Just, oh, just it. Concy. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> one picture. Jeremy Zulo, Concy winner, made the night and the video. That's all we needed to do. Would have made him happy. Yeah. yeah. I was there, I don't know, three weeks ago at the shop when yeah. you came over. And you're like, God damn it, I'm going to make that race day recap one way or another. <laughs> I'm like, all right, Uncle Jer. If you can't win it. the show, you got to be the show. Yeah. Well, I was the show a couple. You were. Listen, there was, a, there was a, we don't have to go super deep into it, but this was kind of my other story. There was a squabble between you and another racer. Oh, that Rando. No, no, yes. no, 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 not, not that one. Okay, okay. So there was a couple. <laughs> That's not the one I was thinking about where he had made a lot of people mad that night, this particular racer. And all of a sudden I look at that car and there's a line of people waiting to talk to this particular racer. This season? Yeah, this okay, season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And behind you stands the entire Zulo family. <laughs> the entire Zulo family. I go, oh boy. And this particular driver, it's, I, I was like, if anything's going to happen, it could potentially come between these, but with this driver and everybody else. And they went up one side of him, down the other, and Jimmy was screaming at him. Apparently, he had some gears in his car or yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah. 
And Dylan, as he's walking away to scream something, was like, oh boy. And I waited. I waited. Nothing happened, thank God, because I feel like that would have been a... That would have been a mess. That would have been a mess. 20 years ago, probably with my brother and I... It would have been a mess. It would have been a mess, but as as we've gotten older, I mean, it would have just been a complete mess. Yeah. (laughs) But we, as we've gotten older and learned that racing isn't everything, there's there's other parts of life that we, we don't tend to get in fist fights anymore or thank god for that anything like that i mean a, a perfect example who to the other story that you were talking about <laughs> Dude, that, was a, <laughs> that was a wild story uh, what was it well so when i had the late model so we're talking 10 11 12 2011 12 yep. mm-hmm. chris riandu had been running the act tour showed up i think he run claremont quite a bit but he was in and out or whatever and um we were racing feature. I had gone by him either inside, outside, I don't remember. But I had passed him clean. Coming out of two, and in my opinion, he just flat out dumped me because I passed him clean. Yep. Well, I had a little bit of a temper. <laughs> or a temper tantrum, we can say. Because yeah. when they threw the caution and they were lining cars up on the front stretch, I proceeded to drive in front of him, snap the car in reverse, and back over the <laughs> his <race>. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah i had it i i used that but then it that cost me some money yeah i've learned yeah <laughs> how did how did that go over not very good yeah not very we're good in right? area though parked the cars and there was some hollering and some screaming and yeah. that was about the end of it i think <sighs> can't remember if we got no we didn't get a week off for that yeah because at that point i think they only had eight nine <laughs> couldn't afford to give you a week off oh, yeah. give two of us a week off All right and we have five cars dude this place i love this place so much it brings out the best in it, it does, does. I, it so does dude, i love it oh man yeah but out of all the racing facilities because i've been to <clears throat> almost every one in new england this is one of the better as far as the way it's set up yeah type of deals it's it nice it's a nice facility it, it is, really is it is yeah and the improvements they're making around here are really really gonna help out with the scoreboard gonna be up this year <laughs> I wasn't touching it. <laughs> I weren't touching it. It'll be up this year, I hope. As far as my part, my brother's part will be done this year. Yeah. <laughs> perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a perfect spot to end it. Uncle yeah. Jer, thanks yeah. for thank you for thanks coming for popping on. on. Appreciate no it. Thank you. All great. We'd like to take a moment and thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Turn 4 Podcast. Have a question, comment, or query? We would love to hear from you. Reach out to us today at our Facebook page, Turn 4 Podcast. And until next week, we'll see you at the racetrack.